I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. In today's video, we will discuss about linear defects and we will talk about what are dislocations. Dislocations are nothing but they are one type of imperfection in solids. And we will discuss edge dislocation, screw dislocation and mixed dislocation. So, let us start. Linear defects or dislocation. So, let us first see what are linear defects or dislocations. So, linear basically means they are one dimensional defects and they are associated mainly with the mechanical deformation. What does that mean? So, this means that the deformation is mainly done with the help of dislocations which are there in the solids. Without dislocation, we cannot have deformation. And we will see specifically how these dislocations, they help in the deformation of the material. So here, to start with, we can say that dislocations are nothing but they are one dimensional defects. And basically, these dislocations, we can't avoid them. During the process of solidification, during the process when we are solidifying the material from the liquid to the solid state, Basically what happens is that these dislocations are bound to happen in the material. You can't avoid them. So dislocations like edge dislocation, screw dislocation and mixed dislocation. So they can't be avoided. And when the material is solidifying all these types of dislocations and point defects will be there inherently in the material and basically you can't avoid them. So here we see that dislocations are nothing but one dimensional linear defects around which atoms are misaligned. So Atoms are misaligned in the planes and we'll see, you know, how these are misaligned and virtually all crystalline materials contain some dislocations that were introduced during the solidification and thermal stresses from rapid cooling. So you can't avoid them. They are there again inherently because of the process of solidification. So also dislocation motion, basically, as I told you earlier, they are associated with the mechanical deformation or plastic deformation of the material and without dislocation we cannot deform the material the material will catastrophically fail after a point if we don't have dislocation or we can't deform the material we can't we can't work upon on the material because of dislocation if dislocation are not there we can't work upon on the material and it will not deform that means it cannot change the shape and size and suddenly when you are applying too much load on the material, it will basically fail. So we want dislocation for plastic deformation. So let us see what are the different types of dislocation. So type 1 is an edge dislocation. So edge dislocation is nothing but it seems as if you know an extra half plane of atom is inserted in a normal crystal. So it can also be shown in terms of a perpendicular sign. So the definition of edge dislocation basically means that there is an extra half plane which is inserted in a normal crystal structure. And in this image, let us see, you know, how does that dislocation looks like. So there is a perfect crystal which is there and in the center of this perfect crystal, you see that it seems as if there is an extra half plane of atom that is inserted. So here you can see the edge dislocation line is shown with the help of the perpendicular sign. So this is basically nothing but the sign of the dislocation which we can show on any crystal. Then you can see the Burgers vector V. We will come to the Burgers vector V. But as of now just see you know how the dislocation is there in the crystal and a normal crystal is there. All the atoms are there in the place but suddenly there is some extra half plane of atom that is inserted in the crystal and it creates a sort of dislocation in the material. So the defect of the edge dislocation line runs along the edge of the extra half row of atom and that extra half row of atom which is there in the crystal is the edge dislocation. So this configuration leads to a simple quantitative designation that is called as the Burgers vector. So that is nothing but the displacement vector which is necessary to close the stepwise loop around the defect. So now in this image let us see what is the Burgers vector. So on the left hand side you see figure A which is there and you uh, draw a loop around the 
figure or around the crystal and then it will close perfectly. But when you have the edge dislocation or the extra half plane of atom, then for closing that loop you need something extra, some extra displacement and that extra displacement is called as the Burgers vector. So the definition of the Burgers vector B related to an edge dislocation. So in figure A in the perfect crystal and M into N atomic step loop closes at the starting point. So from where you start basically you end there and the stepwise loop is closed. But then when we come to figure B in this region you see the same loop which is there it will not close and for closing that loop you need some representation of a magnitude which is known as the Burgers vector or the closing vector you want to have and that magnitude that closure vector is called as the Burgers vector. So how we see the motion of the edge dislocation. So from the left hand side let us say in figure A. So in that figure you see the extra half row of atom which is there at the plane A and you are applying stress from the top and from the bottom. So both from both the side you are applying a stress and the slip plane is there at the middle and the edge dislocation is sliding or moving along the slip plane and when you are applying the load basically what is happening is the the extra half plane of atom is shifting from A to B in figure B you see that it is on the plane B then when you move further it goes on to the, the, the plane C and similarly it will go on moving and then it will come out of the crystal and that is a unit step of slip which is known as the Burgers vector. So in similar way the edge dislocation will glide on the slip plane and it will go on and on and because of this the material is deforming. So that is what we said earlier that what does we what what do we mean by the material deforming with the help of dislocation basically when this dislocation is moving we are getting deformation we are getting deformation we are getting we are plastically deforming the material because of the movement of dislocation imagine if the dislocation is not there and you are trying to deform the material the material will break catastrophically there will be a crack and the material will directly fail that is what happens in normal brittle material because we don't have these deformation or sorry these, these dislocation to move internally. Again one more image we can see here the motion of a dislocation here the green color plane is the extra half plane of atom which is there and direction of the Burgers vector you can see the direction of the stress you can see the gray color plane is the slip plane which is there and the blue color line is the dislocation line and that is the extra plane of atom which is moving along the slip plane when you are applying a stress. This is an actual image or a micrograph of the edge dislocation. Here the red color line which has been drawn on the image, this is an actual image which shows that from the bottom side if you look clearly you can see there is a row of atom which is inserted. So normally we saw the earlier image which was a schematic where we saw the extra half plane of atom which was coming from the top. But here we are looking at an actual image where we can see the plane coming from the bottom side. So it can be from top or it can be from the bottom. So that is not the thing which we, want, we are learning here. We just see that in edge dislocation there is an extra half plane of atom which is there and that will cause the deformation or the material to plastically deform. Okay, so that was type 1 edge dislocation. Let us move on to type 2 which is a screw dislocation. So screw dislocation derives from the spiral stacking of the crystal plane around the dislocation line. This planar ramp results from shear stress of the deformation. So we will see an image which shows a screw dislocation. So here on the left hand side you see an image which shows that the dislocation line is there and then you see that the crystal has been deformed from the middle and it has not been deformed completely. If it would have been deformed completely till the end it would have been an edge dislocation but now it has only been deformed till the middle point and then basically the right hand side image shows that the top view of the left hand side image and from the top you can see how the screw dislocation is there and again here you see the Burgers vector. 
So the dislocation line extends along the line AB. At down position above the slip plane are designated by open circle. Those below are solid circle. So on the right hand side, the image which you see, the the open circles are basically below are on the top. Sorry, and the solid circles are below. So that means these are atoms and these are on the top and these are at the bottom. Okay, and then you see that that is a spiral stacking and that is nothing but a screw dislocation. So there are. you know some difference which we can see in edge and screw dislocation and the, this is a very important question and i have a slide in the end which shows you know the differentiation between edge and screw dislocation so that exactly you know what are the points which we can talk about when we are considering the differentiation between these two types of dislocation okay the third one is a mixed dislocation so generally in any solid we don't have the as dislocation or screw dislocation it is generally a most of the time it is generally a combination of edge and screw and when these two dislocation combine we get which is called as a mixed dislocation so here in the image which is there on the left side you see that the screw dislocation has started to form and then it comes out from the the other side and then it forms an edge dislocation so basically it is not completing as we have seen in the screw dislocation from the line a to b it is not completing its line but it is abruptly coming out from the edge on the surface so in the edge it is in the in the surface in the edge it is the edge dislocation and from where it is starting as you see in the image it is screw dislocation so from one point it is screw in the end it is edge but in the middle it is nothing but mixed dislocation so most of the solids they have a mixed dislocation which is there so dislocation changes the direction and nature within the crystal as in it goes from edge to mixed and then it goes to screw dislocation so basically the burgers vector will be the same at all the point during the edge dislocation line or on the edge dislocation line so the burgers vector will be same it will not change okay so this is an actual image of the dislocation so this is a transmission electron microscope microscopic image or a tem image where you see these dark lines are nothing but dislocation in a titanium alloy and you know mostly they are all very complicated so for the understanding purpose we have seen all the simple images of edge and screw but in actuality as uh, the the scene is like this all are very much piled up they are combined and we cannot differentiate as such what is a screw dislocation or what is an edge dislocation it is all mixed up and combined and this is how the actual dislocations look like so now this is the slide which i was talking about where we will discuss about the differentiation between edge and screw dislocation so the edge dislocation is nothing but it is an extra half plane of atom which we have inserted or which is inserted in the normal crystal structure and screw dislocation is nothing but a spiral stacking of the dislocations and the edge dislocation it is of two types it can be positive it can be negative screw dislocations are also of two types they can be clockwise or they can be anti clockwise the relationship between the dislocation line and the burgers vector is perpendicular in the edge dislocation the relationship between the burgers vector and the dislocation line is parallel in the screw dislocation fourth point the direction of dislocation line movement relative to the burgers vector is parallel in edge dislocation the direction of dislocation line movement relative to the burgers vector is perpendicular in screw dislocation so fifth point is you know the edge dislocation can be removed from the slip plane with the klein mechanism or the dislocation klein mechanism the screw dislocation can be removed from the slip plane with the help of cross slip mechanism so these are little advanced concept and we'll come to them as we are progressing in these lecture series and it is occurring due to the glide and climb motion the edge dislocation is occurring because of the glide and climb motion the screw dislocation is occurring because of the glide motion and in the end we can see how the extra half plane of atom is inserted in the edge dislocation and the figure on the right hand side shows the screw dislocation so let us summarize what we have studied or what we have seen today in this video we have talked about edge dislocation which is nothing but an extra half plane of atom which is inserted in a normal perfect crystal 
screw dislocation is a spiral stacking of the atom which is there it can be clockwise or it can be anti clockwise then we have mixed dislocation generally a combination of edge and screw dislocation and most of the time we have mixed dislocation so thanks for watching i hope you understood about the dislocation and they are nothing but they are one more type of imperfection in solid like point defects and uh, and we will come to one more type of imperfection in the next video which is surface defects. So if you understood the concept of the video, you can like the video, you can share the video with your colleagues and thanks for watching, all the best.